Sundara Chola Emperor's body and soul had been very weak for some days. It is no exaggeration to say that Ilay Aprati told the Prime Minister that he did not sleep at all the night the storm hit. That day, his mind was troubled. In the afternoon the small gardener came and increased his anxiety. Mainly, he levelled many charges against the Chief Minister, Anuradha. He said that ever since he came to Tanjore, all plans of people coming into the fort had broken down. He mentioned that all those who see by chance that they are coming to see the chief minister enter the fort and this may affect the security of the emperor. Hearing those two crimes, the emperor smiled to himself. He did not consider them important. But he could not be so indifferent to the crimes committed by Kalantagakangar. He said that on that day the people who had come from outside and the security forces were arguing in the street and it could turn into a big riot. While Chief Minister Anuradha is known throughout the country as the best in morals, his action is the opposite of that, he has forcibly captured a woman from Kadakare and brought her by force, he has used Palankin and men of Palyavur Palace for this purpose, and he has sent men and Palankin without knowing why. Finally he told about another suspicious incident. I was concerned to learn that a wizard frequented the palace of the great Palyavatarayar. I was reluctant to take action as I knew he was coming to see Ilay Aprati. However, I had assigned a sentinel to keep an eye on the palace. Today, the sentinel came to say that he had seen someone jump over the back wall into the treasure minister's palace garden. He said. I immediately sent some men to capture him. They caught one of them red-handed in the palace garden. When we saw who it was, it turned out to be all Alwarkadian, the great disciple of the Prime Minister. Why did you jump over the wall? He refused to answer. Prime Minister's order he said. Emperor. How can I be responsible for the defense of Tanjore Fort if this Anrade Pramareya is doing all this? My parents were also out of town, so they had to listen to all this. Thus the appeal of Chinapalyavatare increased the confusion of the emperor. Well, Anuradha is coming here this evening. I will inquire about all this. Mainly, the thing about the forced capture of a girl from Kadakare has offended me. It is true. Commander. There is no doubt about it. He asked. No doubt. Palaku and the soldiers who came with them came to me last night and told me that they were caught in a storm when they approached the fort of Tanjore. A tree fell on the road and some people were in danger. They said that it was a great blessing that the tree did not fall on Sivakai. Fortunately, Strihadi did not suffer. And inquire about this. The emperor should investigate the Alwarkadian matter too. After saying that, Kalantaka Kandar took leave of the emperor. Little Pulvaterayar did not want to be there when Anuradhar came. There was a fear in his heart that the Prime Minister might ask him some irrelevant question. It would be a big problem if Anuradha gets orders from the Emperor to open the treasure road to help the people suffering from the storm. How to show face in front of Tamayanur tomorrow? The Emperor had been waiting for Anuradha's arrival since that morning. But the Prime Minister came just as the sun was setting. Even his strong heart was now slightly disturbed. His carefully laid plan had gone awry. Any news about Mandakini? He was putting off going to the palace so that he could go and see the emperor later. All Alwarkadian came in the afternoon and gave the most embarrassing news. He went down the narrow lane where he supposed the mute queen might have gone, and a female gardener appeared to have leaped over the wall of the palace garden. Couldn't tell them the real reason. Sir. That's why they had to be freed by saying their names. He said. This detail caused great concern to the Prime Minister. When there are so many palaces in this Tanjavur fort, does she have to enter the palace of the great Palyavatare? Can't even be asked to search publicly? But let's see. It's a good thing that the great Palyavatare is not in the town. Let's keep a guard around the palace. I have a man inside that palace too. I'll send him word too. Anyway. How much Dharma embarrassment has this runaway girl caused? Said the Prime Minister. Swami. Even if the running girl hadn't interfered the mute queen would have followed their wishes. She would have tried to run away somehow. All Alwarkadian said. 
I have some hope that she who has come this far will not leave without seeing the Emperor. We will try our best. But it is not the right time to wait any longer without going to see the Emperor. You also take the runner girl and come with me. You must let the Emperor know all the news about the two princes. Can the Emperor be convinced if the sailor girl who rescued the prince from the sea tells about it in person? Said. The Prime Minister Anuruddha, his disciple, and Punguzali went to the Emperor's palace. Ilay Aprati and Vanatha were waiting for them in front of the palace. The news that the mute queen was not captured also disturbed the young Prat. The news of her entering the palace garden of the great Pavur king added to the commotion. There was concern that there should not be any adverse effect from this. Sir! Is there a tunnel to get out of the palace of the great Pavur king? If we go through it! The chief minister remembered Vandiyathevan. Mother! Will it be so easy to find that way? We'll all be as lucky as the ape clan youth? Yet I will arrange for men to be stationed outside the fort. Said. Then leaving Alvar Kadayan and Punguzali with Ilay Aprathai, the chief minister alone went to the place where the emperor was lying. After paying the usual respects to the emperor and Vanamadavi, who was seated near him, he informed the emperor that he could not come early because he was making inquiries about the damage caused to the Chola country by the storm and making appropriate arrangements. It gave the emperor some satisfaction to know the details of the arrangements. Why didn't the person who climbed the shore come to this place? Why has no one informed me of his survival and safety yet? Minister! Everything is happening around me without my knowledge. Many things happen in my kingdom without my knowledge. Rather than being alive in such a situation. As the emperor spoke, he choked, and tears welled up in his eyes. Anuruddha, who had been silent all this time out of respect for not interrupting, now interrupted, and said, Lord! Stop! It is forty years since I became friends with you. I have not done anything against your welfare all this time, and I will not do it again. I may have omitted to tell you a thing or two, so as not to trouble them in vain. Forgive me if it is a crime. Now I will answer all that you have asked. Be merciful and be quiet, he asked compassionately. Prime Minister! I have no more peace of mind in this birth. I don't know if I will have peace of mind in the next birth. When my dear people and my lifelong friend the Prime Minister are conspiring against me. Sir! you will soon learn who are plotting against you. I am not complicit in that mischief. I am now keeping this post of Prime Minister for the sake of name. I have told you many times before that I will give this post to the Grand Master. I am willing to do so now. If they have the slightest displeasure with me. Yes, Prime Minister, yes. You are all ready to leave me at any moment. This Malayan daughter is the one who will be with me till my last breath. Among all the sins I have committed, I have done something good. That is why I have taken her as my life partner. Said the Emperor. Hearing these words, Vanamadavi, who was sitting on the bed next to the Emperor, burst into tears. She immediately got up and went to the next room. King Mana. Every word you have spoken about Malayaman's daughter is true. Even the people born in her womb have unsurpassed devotion to them. However, they don't respect my word. They don't obey my orders. They do something without my knowledge. You also join them. Didn't you already know that Aromas Hivarman escaped from the sea and is in Nagaipatnam Buddha Vihara? Why didn't you tell me? Forgive me sir. I was not sure of that detail until yesterday. I was only sure that the prince's life was not in danger. Wasn't all the soothsayers telling lies about the time of his birth? Prime Minister! There is no limit to the harm that can be caused by astrology. I intend to remove all the soothsayers from this kingdom. Everyone is trying to put him on the throne while I am still alive, based on what the soothsayers said about Aromazai's horoscope, are you one of them? Not true, Lord. On the contrary, I thought it would be better if the little prince did not come to this Chola country for a while. I told the prince so when I went to Ceylon. But as soon as I came here, 
the men of the Palyavatarayas have come to Ceylon to take the prince prisoner. You have also given your consent. As the whole city is spread out, the people are united in their anger against the plunderers. It is said among the people that they deliberately sunk the ship carrying the prince in the sea. Lie, Prime Minister! Lie! Everything is a complete lie. Parthibendra Pallava has told me everything. The prince did not come in the ship sent by the Palyavatarayas. He came in Parthibendra's ship. On the way, he jumped into the sea. Saying that it was to save someone who was on another burning ship, Parthipendra did not stop and jumped into the stormy sea. When I think about it now, it all seems like a lie and a ruse to deceive me. I can't bear the pain when I think that Kuntava was also involved in this ruse. I thought Kuntava would be with me even if the whole world turned against me. I told all the stories a father would normally hesitate to tell his daughter. O King! I will not believe even if the world says that the young man is plotting against them, neither should they. If the young man does not tell them something, there must be a reason for it. There is no lie in the little prince jumping into the sea to save his friend. Here is the sailor girl who saved the prince and his friend from the sea and reached the shore in the next room. She is there. She knows what happened in Sri Lanka firsthand. O king! Let's call her! Said Anuradha. Emperor excitedly said, Really? Call her immediately. First Minister! Is she the woman who asked you to forcefully bring water from Kadakare? Said. Anuradhar said, The lady who came in the palanquin is waiting in the next room. Here I am calling, and when Anuradhar clapped his hand, Pungazali and Alwarkadian came in.